Okay, today we're going to talk about linear modeling. So we're using our form of an equation of a line, but now we're going to give some real world applications to it. Okay? Let's just jump right into a problem. Uh, the cost to rent a car in dollars for driving a rental car x miles is c equals 0.2x plus 35. Cost to rent a car and drive x miles is c equals 0.2x plus 35. Okay, so this guy here is our linear model. All right, and what this model or equation represents, in this case, it's cost to rent a car and drive a specific amount of miles. Okay, so we were pretty um, obvious with the letters here. C represents cost, and X represents the number of miles that you're going to drive. Okay, to rent this car. All right, so question number one. How much does it cost to rent the car but not even drive it? Question number one. How much does it cost just to rent the car and not even drive it at all? So what would that question ask you to do? If I'm not going to drive it, how, how far am I going to drive it? Zero. zero. So I'd plug in zero here, and you'd get $35, $35 okay? Now, when we have something like that, we call that the initial cost. So my initial cost just to do this thing is $35 without even driving it at all, okay? So to answer part one, um, how much does it cost to rent it but not drive it? We let x be zero. And when you let x be zero, because we're not driving any miles, you get the initial cost just to rent this car. Zero's out there and you have $35. Okay. Question number two. How much does it cost to drive the car 200 miles? How much does it cost to drive the car 200 miles? OK, so if I was ask this question, how much to drive it 200 miles, it's basically letting me know that x is 200, right? So what I need you guys to do is plug in a 200 right there and figure out what that's going to be. Okay, so plug in 200. C equals 0 0.2 <coughs> times 200 plus 35. Go ahead and do that for me. And what do you get for a final answer? 39. $39? $75. Yeah, so make sure you have 200 times 0.2, then add 35. And what is it? 79? Yeah, I got 75. 75. Okay. Okay, question number three. How much does each additional mile cost? Now, what this question is asking, it's kind of like our rate per mile, right? So if I want to do another mile, how much does that cost extra? Another mile, another mile. So each additional mile, OK? So we look into our formula here, and that's when we have this constant rate with a linear model, that is our slope, everybody, OK? So we have two things. If you go back and look at our notes from before, we have y equals mx plus b, right? This was my um, slope, form, or slope intercept formula for an equation. And we had two pieces of information, m and b. And m was the slope, and b was the y-intercept, OK? When we look at modeling, it's the same equation. All right, we might change the y and x to c and x, like we did here. But this is our constant rate of change. So our slope is a constant rate of change. So please write that down. 
and our B is our initial amount. Okay? So that's how these things transform in modeling world. So your y-intercept is your initial amount, in this case the initial cost, and your slope is your constant rate of change. Okay? And that's how you answer this question. How much does each additional mile cost? Well, if I drive one mile, it's 0.2 times 1 plus 35. If I drive two miles, it's 0.2 times 2 plus 35. If I drive three miles, so each additional mile, you're just multiplying by 0.2. Does everybody see that? So it's just point, you're just adding 0.2 each time. So if I, add, if I had you guys put 1 in for this, you'd have 35.2. If I had you put 2 in for this, you'd have 35 plus 0.2 times 2, which is just another 20 cents. Okay. So how much does each additional mile cost? It's another 20 cents each time. All right? 20 cents. And that's coming from that slope, point two. All right. Okay, great. And that was the last question on that problem. Any questions on this? So we have our initial slope intercept form from an equation, and now we're just transforming it to a real world application model. Okay. Let's do another one. Okay, a t-shirt shop. Charges. $50 for a custom print. Plus $2 per shirt. Okay? So now we're doing a t-shirt shop. They charge $50 for a custom print plus $2 per shirt that you're going to print. Okay. All right, so question number one. Write out cost model for printing X custom shirts. So let's say I'm in a business and I want to have t-shirts with my company on it. And let's say I want to print 500 of these shirts with my company's picture. Okay? And I go to this t-shirt company and they charge $50 for that custom print, you know, whatever the logo of our shop is, and $2 per shirt. Okay, so can you write out the model for how much it's going to cost and then I can see how much I can afford. Okay? Can I afford 1,000 shirts? Can I afford just 100 shirts? Can I, maybe this is too much for me. Maybe I have to go to a different company or something else. All right. So what do we have here? The cost, how much per shirt? Cost equals $2 per shirt, $2 times X. And what's the initial cost just to have your custom logo? $50, right? So it's very similar to the last example. Here's my cost model, $2 per shirt, plus $50 for them to do your custom um, model of, of your logo. Okay. All right, that's question number one. Question number two. How much for 300 shirts? My company wants to print 300 shirts, maybe give it away as free advertising to customers. How much is it going to cost to do 300 shirts based on this model? Two times 300 plus 50. And what do you guys get for that? 650 bucks. Okay. Now a lot of times, this is great, this, this will tell us how many shirts, but a lot of times, and if you're in a company, you have a particular budget, right? And so they're like, okay, Tammy, we have $1,000. How many shirts will $1,000 get us? And that's the question you have to answer, all right? 
So that's a little bit the opposite. Okay, so if the question number three is how much or how many shirts can we get for a thousand dollars? How do we do that? How many shirts can we get for a thousand dollars? So how is this question different from the last question? I'm giving you the amount of money. Okay, this is what we can afford, $1,000. How many shirts will that buy us? So 1,000 is not gonna go into X, which is the number of shirts. 1,000 is gonna go into cost, okay? How much can we get for 1,000 shirts? So, to solve this problem, we're gonna have 1,000 equals 2X plus 50. And then, the only way that you're gonna be able to figure this out is using algebra, right? Which is what we're in, algebra. So how do I solve that? You subtract 50 from both sides. Subtract 50 from both sides and you get 950. Then you divide it by 2x. Then you divide it by 2x. So 950 equals 2x. 950 equals 2x. Divide both sides by 2. How many shirts can we get for $1,000? 475 shirts. How much to send over and just get our custom logo? No shirts at all. Fifty dollars. And what does that refer to? The initial cost. Fifty dollars. Okay. How much is each additional shirt cost? Oh, I don't want ten shirts. I want eleven shirts. How much more do I have to add? Two dollars. Two bucks per shirt. Okay. Those are the two important things. Our slope. Two dollars is the rate of change. Okay. Constant rate of change. This y-intercept is our initial amount. In this case, again, it's cost. Okay? All right, let's do one more problem. We have three cell phone plans. Yes, sir. Uh, the last section on three. I'm not sure of the numbers. Yeah. What if the last section? All right, cell phone plans. So we have three. Let's say this is company A, this is company B, and this is company C. Okay. Company A charges a flat rate. Fifty bucks per month. That's it, fifty dollars a month. Use as many minutes as you want. Okay, company B charges you a hundred dollars to use your phone. And then two cents per minute. Hundred dollars to use your phone, period, and then two cents per minute. Okay. Company C doesn't charge any upfront costs, but charges you fifteen cents a minute. Um, point one five. Okay, so these are my three cell phone choices. I am in Europe somewhere. I'm only gonna be there for a month. And these are, I go into some European cell phone shop, and these are my three options, okay? All right, so question number one is, which is the best value for I'm going to be there for a month. I don't know how much I'm going to use a phone, but I'm guessing approximately 200 minutes. Okay? So here's the situation I'm in. I think I'm going to use a cell phone for about 200 minutes. And these are my options. So find the best value. Okay, go for it. What I want you to do is do the cost model for each of these. 
Then you're going to plug in 200 minutes and see whichever is the cheapest. Okay, whatever is the cheapest, that's what we're going to go with. equals 50, right? No matter how many minutes you use. So let's let's all let x be minutes. Let's let c be cost. And let's let x be minutes, OK? Let's all use the same um, values. So number one, it doesn't matter how many minutes you use it, you're going to pay $50, right? So number one, I'll do for you, c equals 50. Or if you wanted to be super slick and show me how amazingly smart you are, you'd be like, Look, Bobby, 0 times x, because we're not paying for a minute, plus your $50 to use the phone. And that would be awesome, too. Okay. And then do number two and number three. What's my cost function formula for $100 to start and $0.02 cents a minute? What's that going to look like? Point zero two x plus one hundred, great. And what is the third equation going to look like? Point one five x, right? No initial cost to use that. Does everybody see that? So my slope is the per minute charge, and my y intercept is your initial cost to use this phone company. Okay. Now your job, everybody, is to plug in two hundred for x, and then see which is the cheapest, because you're only going to be in Europe for a month. So you're only going to use one of these for a month, OK? And you're predicting, oh, I'm probably going to use it like 200 minutes, not too much. So phone company A, how much is that going to be? 50 bucks, right? That one's always going to be 50 bucks. Now, phone company B, guys, I mean, I could figure it out because I asked you to, but I'm pretty sure I'm not going to use that phone company. Why is that? It's 100 just to use it, right? Phone company A only charges 50 bucks and zero per minute. This company charges 2 cents per minute plus $100, OK? But anyway, let's figure out what that is, 0.02 times 200 plus 100. Did you guys get $104? Yeah. Then you are amazingly correct. Great. Company C charges only 15 cents a minute. If you're only going to use it 200 minutes, what do we get? What company am I going with? C. All right. Question number two. I'm really homesick. Okay. I'm going to be on the phone every day, call my mom, my dad, my girlfriend, my brother. I'm going to use this thing like 2,000 minutes, all right? So this is Mr. Independent Bobby. He's cool, 200 minutes for a whole month. Question two, 2,000 minutes, okay? Go to work, see what you get for 2,000 minutes. Same question, 2,000 minutes, because I'm super homesick. thousand minutes. So everybody agrees phone company A is only going to still be 50 bucks. Okay. Let's see what outrageous price B is going to charge us. $140. And what about C? 15 cents per minute. Whoa. See, that's how company C gets you. They hope that you're super homesick, right? Now, for 200 minutes, company C was the best option. For 2,000 minutes, company C is by far the worst option. 
okay? So we have to do the algebra here to figure out what's the best for us. Company A, $50, okay? Questions on modeling. So there's two things. The slope is your constant rate of change. The y-intercept is your initial amount, okay? And the problems we've done, it was always an initial cost. But you know, you could have bacteria growth, and that would, it would be an initial amount of bacteria. It's an initial amount of whatever the problem's saying, okay? Any questions on this? All right, great. Let me give you some problems to work on.